uh, well, one analogy is useful here, and that's that a Bitcoin address or UTXO is basically this unbreakable vault, you know, this secure treasury chest where you can keep gold coins uh, stored, right? The gold coins being Satoshis. Um, and this can be a naive single signature uh, address, right? Where you only need to prove one signature of one public key so to spend these coins again. And so this is your regular everyday Wasabi wallet, Electrum wallet, or whatnot. Um, and but, but this is rather naive because for every transaction that you make, you need to tell the entire Bitcoin network that you're spending this coin and creating this new one. So everyone needs to verify every transaction. And while the Lightning Network is more in a sense that you collaborate with another party to share the ownership over this Bitcoin vault in a two out of two multi-signature, right? So now you need to provide two signatures in order to actually spend the money again. But you only put money into this contract or into this vault if you have the cryptographic assurance that in any case you could get this money out of there again. Right? We do that with these Lightning Network pre-signed transactions. So that even if the other party goes offline or even publishes a, a old channel state, you can always still get your money back. So in the Lightning Network, even though you do not tell everyone about the transactions that you make, because you make them off-chain in your payment channel, um, you always have the guarantee to go back on-chain and actually claim the Bitcoin back for yourself to however you want to use that. Well, yeah. yeah, go ahead. Yeah, well, no, uh, side chains are somewhat of a different approach. It's because here you relinquish the control over the Bitcoin completely. Right? So you spend out of your single signature wallet or even out of your Lightning Network channel. You spend your Bitcoin into an address that is not controlled by you, by but by rather, for example, 11 out of 15 uh, cosigners, so to say. Uh, but for the Bitcoin blockchain itself, you have relinquished that control and the Bitcoin is no longer yours officially. And so there is this trust that this federation of, say, 11 out of 15 can spend on-chain the Bitcoin however they want. Uh, yeah. In this sense, basically a, a bank account, right? A money warehouse. Uh, this group of people or companies uh, take care to not, or, or take care of your Bitcoin and could theoretically spend them, but they promise that they won't. Yeah, that's an excellent uh, uh, summary. And, uh, and yeah, it's good, good, like a uh, good explanation of like how the uh, trust is different between the two. Um, one thing I think is important to add because like kind of like if you compare the two, it just sort of sounds like, uh, federated sidechains suck and lightning is amazing. <laughs> and in a way that's true, right? Because a uh, lightning network does have, uh, you know, better, uh, decentralization basically where, where you, you don't, you don't have to really trust anyone. Uh, you just have to be able to go onto the Bitcoin blockchain and settle if absolutely it's necessary. Um, but what's important to point out is that the Lightning Network is one, quite complex because you have to interact with lots of different people. Uh, if you want to hop, uh, between lots of different channels. So Alice to Bob, Bob to Carol, Carol to Dave, Dave to Eve, etc. Uh, it's a lot of complexity, a lot of communication. So that's kind of tricky, but you know, software can kind of solve that. But then the second issue is sort of a throughput issue. Uh, with a federated sidechain, there really is no limit to how many coins you can send. You can send uh, a billion dollars worth of Bitcoin to a federated sidechain, and then you can send that billion dollars in any way you want to anyone who is also using the federated sidechain. Um, but on the Lightning Network, you are constricted by how many coins are in each channel. So if you go through a lot of hops, uh, all these hops have a certain amount of coins in them, and you can only you know send as much as there's liquidity available. Um, so it becomes sort of, uh, it, it's excellent for smaller payments, um, at least to, to a certain degree. Uh, but for larger payments, uh, it's, it's sort of, uh, insufficient or, or difficult, uh, to use. So that's sort of the trade off. Um, and I think just very generally speaking, we need everything, right? So one is not better than the other. It's not like, oh, everybody will use lightning. Nobody will use federated sites. I don't think it's anything like that at all. I think we're going to have lots of different trade offs with lots of different layer two systems. And people are going to use all of them depending on their needs.